Welcome to the 10th YouTube service of Sunday Worship with St Mary's Church Radcliffe-on-Trent, with St Peter and St Paul's Church Shelford and Newton. We are Paul and Anne Thien, members of St Mary's Church. Let's begin with a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There'll be something a little bit different this week for our younger worshippers. It's really good to have you worshipping with us, by the way. Uh, so if you're young at heart, even, uh, and you have a, a device handy, you can click in the link in the description and it will take you to a quiz which you can have open during the service. All the answers to the quiz will be in the service at some point. And there, there's maybe an edible prize, which can be delivered to you during the week for the, the best answers. I hope that might be a bit of fun. I'm reading John 17, verse 1 to 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, 
to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them. And know in truth that I am from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on your behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you have given me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This passage is not easy to understand, is it? Let's put it into context. Jesus and the disciples had just had the so-called Last Supper on the night that Jesus would be arrested. John's Gospel takes three whole chapters, from chapter 14 to chapter 16, with Jesus preparing the disciples for his going. It's as if Jesus was saying, OK, I'm about to go, so here are the most important things you need to remember. He talks about himself being the only way to the Father. I am the way, the truth and the life, he says. He talks about how he will send the Holy Spirit and how much of an advantage that will be for us. He talks about the importance of abiding in him, like branches connected to the vine, drawing our life from him, walking in communion with him. So that's the context for our passage this morning, where Jesus now goes on to pray that the death he is about to undergo will fix things, that it will provide eternal life for those who abide in him, walking in communion with God. Of course, there are many other things to notice in this passage. It's complex and it connects to a lots, of, a lots of difficult theology. But we have only a few minutes, so we have to choose one thing to look at, don't we? One angle to approach the text. Well, I want us to notice how the motif of glory runs through the passage from beginning to end. Jesus prays for the Father to glorify him, so that Jesus can glorify the Father. He says that he's been glorifying the Father all along, and he looks forward to having restored to him the full glory he had before his incarnation, that is, before he, as God, took on the flesh of a human being. So anyway, this idea of being glorified seems a strong thread throughout Jesus' prayer. But what does it mean to be glorified? It's not at all a word we ordinarily use, is it? Here's a definition of the original Greek word. It means to influence opinion about someone so as to enhance their reputation, to praise, honour, extol. That's what glorified means. One really good example of that we've all seen recently is when people have gone onto their doorsteps and clapped for NHS workers or for care workers. In biblical language, we might say that people were giving glory to the NHS or that they are glorifying care workers. If you watch the daily Covid briefings, 
you may have noticed how people will often begin their speech with, first, I want to thank and praise all the NHS workers, or something like that. Have you seen that? Can you imagine a world or a future where there's a press conference at number 10 and Boris Johnson and other officials and even journalists will preface their comments with, first, I want to thank my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And not out of habit or duty, but because they really mean it. That would be wonderful, won't it? You may have seen certain sports stars like Tyson Fury do exactly that. We are told that every time we'll confess that Jesus is Lord. But glorifying is not just limited to words of praise. Jesus said he was glorifying the Father by finishing the work that he'd been given to do. There was glory in the cross he was about to go through, even though the cross was the pinnacle of social shame. In the cross, Jesus gave glory to God through his obedience, even unto death. In the cross, he gave glory to God through his love, saying, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. There is glory in the power of the cross, as it defeats the powers of darkness, as it swallows up all the sin in the world and does away with it, nailing it to the cross. That's my sin and your sin nailed to the cross. And there's glory in Jesus' ascension, as he takes his rightful place at God's side these are the reasons why Jesus willingly went to the cross, to glorify God. All these things praise and lift up the renown of God. They're glorifying him. And there's one more place I want you to notice in our passage. Jesus says he has been glorified in his disciples. Did you catch that? Jesus says his disciples enhance his reputation doesn't always seem like that, does it? But this is a, a promise, not a command. Jesus isn't saying, you have to enhance my reputation. He's saying, you will. What Jesus has done for us, given us eternal life, manifests itself in us, whether we know it or not. And Jesus is glorified. Back in chapter five of John's Gospel, Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does, he does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. And now he tells us, this is eternal life, that we may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent, that we may know him. As we experience the foretaste of eternal life now, passing from death to life, it cannot fail to flow over and be noticed. And so we are glorifying God, even and especially in our weaknesses and failings. This way of God is good, isn't it? Now, of course, there are many different people perhaps listening to this. Maybe you can relate to this experience of passing from death to life, of knowing God in intimate fellowship. Then glorify God from the rooftops. You have been given a precious gift. Or maybe you are a Christian, but find it difficult to relate to this language of experiencing the foretaste of eternal life now in this life. You are still glorifying God, of course, and God wants you to know that by the cross of Christ, you have eternal life and that you can know God to the extent that it will seem like you're experiencing eternal life right now. Or maybe you're exploring all this and some of it seems rather strange. Well, you need to know that following Jesus is not chiefly about achieving life after death. It's about knowing God right now and being changed by the glory of the cross. As the Apostle Paul writes, all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, 
are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Come Holy Spirit on us today. Now the music team are going to lead us in a song. So open your windows and sing loud so your neighbours will hear God being glorified. The chorus goes, you are strong enough in my weakness. God be lifted up and I will sing. Lift your praises high. Lord be magnified.
to see you we know we've got lots of families in the church so we thought that this week we'd like to focus a bit on what it's like being families in the lockdown um, Paul and I homeschooled our children until they were about eight years old when we lived in Africa and then when we first came back to England so we've had some experience of it before but for most people it's a very new thing um, so I wonder if you could both tell us um, how are you finding homeschooling yeah, it's been it's been good. It's um, really nice to spend time with them and to see firsthand really what they have to do, what work they have to do, and how they apply themselves to the work they have to do. Um, what's not been so good is trying to pretend that I know what a fronted adverbial is, or how to multiply fractions, or speak French. But it's been nice just to see what they have to do. Hopefully, you don't have to multiply fractions in French. Because that would be even well, harder. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what about the time? And how are you finding it? Yeah, it's um like like Matt said, it's a it's hard knowing how they they've been taught at school and all their methods. Um, yeah, I've been struggling with the uh, equivalent fractions today with uh, Harriet's Year Five maths. Um, but again, it's been nice to spend time with them and see see what takes their interest really. Um, Joshua is choosing a lot of PE outside on the trampoline, um, whereas Harriet is very um, studious and she's down here nine o'clock in the morning already set up and getting on on her own. So, yeah, it's been nice to to do it with them and to see um, see how they're progressing through the different weeks and different skills that they're getting. Um, how are you finding homeschooling? Well. Alice can answer it best because she's doing most of it, apart from the odd Wednesday morning. But what I will say is, I think it's the whole period is a bit less frantic than it always seems to be. The morning routine and the afternoon routine, and there's been a great benefit of that, really, in mm. terms of a, you know just time with the children and a, and a bit of a closeness that develops because of that. Mm. I mean, I'm not sure how much how much learning is going on in our household, but um, we're you know it's it's just the struggle of kind of homeschooling a nine year old and a five year old, and um, you know you're not sure how much to do or how little to do, how much to kind of try and build resilience, and how much to think well you know you'll you'll have to you'll have to do things that are challenging when you're at school, so you will need to do things that are challenging when you're at home, so you know or do we just make it off? Or, you know all the stuff that they like doing and they enjoy doing you know how much to push really um mm. obviously I, because i'm a teacher it makes it it gives me i think it gives me some you know a, a good place to start but obviously i'm not a primary school teacher so <laughs> i'm kind of cobbling together what i can but um you know there's, there are some really lovely resources out there and i have to really enjoy doing a lot of things with, the, with them that uh, just I would not have ever have had opportunity to do you know it's a real it is a real privilege you know mm. thanks yeah. <laughs> okay Lindsay and Matt could you tell us what do you think has been the best thing for you about homeschooling I think it's been really lovely to spend time with the children and to just see what kind of things they really enjoyed learning about and to encourage them, to be able to encourage them in the areas that they've needed to, um, to be able to just give them a bit more one-to-one -one attention that they perhaps wouldn't really get in a school environment. Um, and just have the chance to really be involved and spend time together. Um, but also to take the learning outside of the classroom and just teach them general life skills, cooking and baking and 
you know, we've been going down to the allotment and things like that. Um, but yeah, most importantly, I think it's just been all spending time together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Michelle and John, um, have there been opportunities that you found to include God in your homeschooling? Or, or, well, or we try to take it. Been? Sorry? It's all right. We try and take a, a, a biblical approach to it all. Um, so, for example, science, we've uh, been trying to create an ecosystem out of nothing by speaking speaking over it. Uh, it's not happened yet. But <laughs> <laughs> um, maths is proving problematic. We spent a long time explaining why five loaves had two fish equals 5,000 with <laughs> leftover 12. Um, but in all seriousness, we it's about encouraging them. It's about letting them know that they're not always going to be brilliant at everything. None of us are, but they are going to have strength and it's important to try. I was having a discussion with one of them today as they were finding something really difficult. And I said, nobody should have a problem with you finding it hard, but it's a problem when you just don't bother trying. And I know that um, I know that both of mine have got a lot of comfort from hymns and listening to you know songs that we might sing when we're in church and a lot of the sort of things on you you know the clips where you know there's the blessing and there's a few other things and they've got a lot of that I can see visibly when they watch something like that or listen to hymns it's really giving them something you know above and beyond just just sort of a, a straightforward sort of learning experience it's really giving them a comfort that they des so desperately need at the moment thanks uh, so i was wondering whether either of you would consider homeschooling on a permanent basis when the schools go back or was not that good <laughs> i couldn't do it full time no <laughs> you know like lindsay said it's you know, more creative with the baking and you know other things that you can get the learning through rather than just sitting and writing yeah. um but yeah i hands off to all the teachers i, I couldn't do it from time <laughs> it's been quite challenging for me this week because um matt's gone back to work now full time but i'm still working and i work from home usually so trying to kind of juggle the homeschooling plus my work as well it's been um it's been quite tough really so i don't think i could homeschool full time but one thing that i haven't missed is just the busyness of the school and all of the extracurricular activities i haven't missed rushing around and it's kind of made me really kind of realize that those kind of th the things aren't really important as long as the children are happy they don't need to do all of these extra things so how can we pray for you and for families with children at this time those of us who aren't used to teaching and being with our children to give us the wisdom in those situations um in switching between those roles of teacher and parent um so you're giving them the guidance and and then also how to you know manage uh, manage their anxieties and their worries and how to talk to them about what's actually happening in a way that is clear um and not going to uh, you know heighten their anxieties but it's going to help to help you know get them to understand it so again it's there is so much wisdom that we need that you know that we're all trying to seek and look for and actually prayer seems to me the best thing that we could have at the moment to, to navigate all these difficult and potentially what feel like really you know could almost be life you know changing decisions it may not be but it feel it can feel like that in the moment yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think for me particularly added patience and because uh, having a young baby as well mm -hmm. trying to to homeschool and try and do stuff around the house to get ready for when the business opens again um on quite um quite disturbed sleep has been quite a challenge um and i'm finding that my patience is not as good as it was um so yeah just just patience and guidance really for coping with it all um because we don't know how long we've got to cope with it for really um so yeah those are my two main things really okay. Any other prayer suggestions? 
there'll be a lot of um, parents who are in situations where they're trying to juggle lots of different things um, and trying to cope with that can be quite hard. So just um, sometimes you kind of feel guilty that you can't do everything. Um, so really, I think just to pray for sort of like a sense of peace in the home environment and to just know that actually you don't have to do all of the things and as long as you're doing your best and you know that you're happy and your children are happy that that's yeah. enough our father in heaven we thank you for the peaceful environment around us while such a hectic disease is among us we also take the time to thank you for the opportunity to learn more about our families and to spend time with them. We also take the time to think about the children who are not in school, therefore they don't get free school meals, so they are going hungry. Also, we pray for those who don't have computers or Wi-Fi to do their schoolwork and are falling behind. And we especially pray for the young children and teenagers who have special needs or have mental health issues and their parents struggling to take care of them and try to keep on top of their work. We pray that in all these situations that parents and the youth society may have strength and wisdom to guide them through this tough time. Amen. Thank you. Dear Lord, we thank you for families and for the joy of having children around us. I want to pray for parents who are going through the challenge of juggling work and children and children's schooling at home at this time. We pray that homes will be a peaceful, happy place for both parents and children. And Lord, we pray for strength for those who are tired, maybe with disturbed nights or with all the extra responsibilities that they have. And we pray for patience and for wisdom in bringing up our children at this time. Lord, we also pray for our government at this time and that you will give them the wisdom on how to end the lockdown. We pray that people won't be too anxious to go back to their normal lives and to seeing other people again around them. Lord, we pray for mental health for children who may have been quite disturbed in these strange times by a change in their routine and we pray that they will also find it okay to go back to school and not be too scared. We thank you Lord that you are above all of the coronavirus and everything that's happening around us and by looking at you we can find peace and stability in these times. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze With hope, the world for in our very souls Holy Spirit, come invade us now We are your church We need your power in us We seek your kingdom
kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray and as our service draws to a close so I pray for God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those whom you love, today and always. Amen.